If you've spent some time 3D printing complex objects, you'll know how powerful support structures can be. It really frees up your imagination and ability to 3D print almost any object, even on a low-end FDM 3D printer. But sometimes you'll come across a 3D print you need to create that seems almost impossible. But don't despair, because in this video I'm going to share with you my 5 super user tips for generating awesome support material. Let's get started. Tip number one, support pillar resolution. Have you ever wondered just how support pillar resolution actually works? Well, imagine the slicer is overlaying a grid of points for a given model. It then detects overhangs of that model within that grid and creates supports to hold them in place as the object is 3D printed. While the default of four millimeters is sufficient for most prints, it can actually sometimes miss details on more complicated parts. Because of this, I often change my support pillar resolution down to 1mm to ensure all base details are caught. However, I discovered that many people think by doing this you're affecting the density of your support structures, and that's actually not true at all. Instead, changing this setting simply alters the resolution of the grid that Simplify 3D generates. As you can see in this example, the support structure created is the same density with a 1mm pillar resolution versus a 4mm pillar resolution. It simply allows me to capture additional details by changing it to 1mm. Now, there is a catch. You can run into some issues changing your pillar resolution down to 1mm. For example, when you do automatic support generation, it may now create a pillar that's standalone and only one millimeter across, which is obviously a very bad idea as it's more than likely going to fall over during the printing process. So if you do end up with something like this, it's always wise to go back in and use a larger support size and you can even do this manually. Yes, you can actually use multiple pillar sizes within the same print and the same support structure. Simplify 3D doesn't mind at all and they'll become a homogenous 3D print support structure. Tip number two, bed only supports. This setting can be accessed from the support type dropdown, which is either in the support settings window in your process, or if you're defining manual supports, you can find it here. This setting will prevent supports being generated, which build on the print itself, instead only allowing supports that originate from the print bed up to the model. This is really handy if you're working with a model that's been specifically designed for 3D printing on an FDM printer and it may have details that might look like they need support on the model itself, but actually don't. For example, this screw thread here. While some parts of the model do need support from the bed up, the screw thread itself should not have supports, otherwise it's not going to work very well. So in this case, selecting bed only support for automatic support generation saves you a lot of time. Tip number three, use dense top layers. In my opinion, this setting is the secret to getting good looking underside curves and supporting small details on your 3D printed model. Without dense layers turned on, the print comes into contact with coarser support lines leading to a rougher finish in that area. Dense layers form what I like to call an interface layer between the coarser support infill and the surface of your part. You can set any layer amount you like for the dense layers. However, I generally go at two or four layers thick for a good result. One word of warning about using dense top layers, it can make support material harder to remove from prints in some cases. And because it tends to remove in a sheet rather than line by line, you can accidentally damage small details of a print, which might be encased in dense support just because of how it's generated. So keep that in mind and always use G-code preview to see if by using dense supports, it will help your model or possibly mean some details may be damaged. Tip number four, create stronger support structures by alternating layer direction. On occasion, you'll need to use some really tall support structures and sometimes due to print movement, these can wobble or even topple over if they're created using default support settings. Instead, you can actually alternate this support infill direction much like the infill inside a 3D print would be. This creates far stronger support structures and in my experience, these support structures are incredibly rigid, even on a fast moving print bed. To prove it, I printed this nut and bolt hovering in midair with this type of support structure building up to meet it. Regular support structures would have had significant wobble at this height. However, by alternating my infill between minus 45 and 45 degrees, which is a 90 degree difference between each layer, the supports are rock solid and I think I could have even gone at twice or more the height without any suffering of print quality on my 3D printed piece. 
Something to watch out for when you're doing this kind of support structure, however, is it's far, far stronger, which is good in some cases, but in other cases with internal cavities that need support structures, it can make it really, really difficult to break away. I always try to ensure that there's a path behind the support to punch it through or pull it off rather than trying to pull it out of an internal cavity. It's also handy to allow space for a pair of pliers or that kind of thing to reach into support structures and crack them out in one go, which works really, really well. Just keep that in mind. If you do fill a cavity with this kind of support, you're probably never gonna get it out. And tip number five, our final tip for this lineup, extra inflation distance. This will increase the size of your supports in the X and Y directions, essentially extending them out beyond the part that they're supporting. Now, why would you wanna do this? Well, it makes the support material far easier to remove. A small increase of even 0.5 millimeters can make support material easier to grab onto and remove from the part and doesn't add much print time or material use. And as a power tip, you can also combine this with manual supports to create your own support removal points. Essentially, this just gives you a tab you can grab onto with a pair of pliers or your finger even and break away the support structure. And with clever planning, you can make support removal far easier and safer by doing this kind of approach rather than trying to get in with sharp tools to break it away from a part where it's flush with the surface. So there you have it, five additional methods you can add to your support structure toolbox to help you in your awesome 3D printing projects. And if you found this video useful guys, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future 3D printing tips, tricks or reviews on Maker's Muse. And if you're a little bit new to support structures and this video seems a little bit over your head, don't forget to check out our 3D printing 101 video on support structures to clarify all of the basics. A big thanks to Simplify3D for sponsoring this video here on Maker's Muse and I look forward to seeing you again very shortly. Catch you later guys, bye.